picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior, because he healed my heart, changed my name, forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the master, I thank the savior, I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. Hey, I thank God. How many of us can remember situations? Thank you. I just want you to close your eyes for about 10 seconds and remember when He picked me up, He picked you out of that situation. Not only did He pick you up, but he turned that situation around. He turned me around. Hey, and he brought you out. He placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master. I thank the savior. I thank God. Oh, I thank God. I know there was some times in 2023 when things looked a bit shaky and you were wondering, God, did you really send me down this road? Did you really send me in this direction? But then the God that is able to, 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 to make a pathway in the sea, the God who is able to, to tear down walls, the, the God who is able to heal the sick, the God who is able to raise the dead. What did he do? He turned your situation around. Hey, hallelujah. He turned that situation around. He came in and he turned it around. That's the God that we serve. You know, some of us don't have a firm foundation. Some people don't have a firm foundation, but I have a testimony of a firm foundation in 2023. Thank you. And it, it is because of a foundation in Christ that I can arrive on December 31st. At what time is it? It's at 9.18 p.m. on December 31st. And, be, and, and thank God because I wouldn't have been able to make it if it had not been for his grace. I would not have been able to make it if it had not been for his mercy. And when I say I, I'm really talking we. We would not be able to make it if we didn't have our feet planted in a firm foundation. So we just give God thanks. Can you just give him thanks right now? We give you thanks, Jesus. We give you thanks, Jesus. We couldn't make it without you, Lord. Oh, we give you thanks. We recognize the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, as that firm foundation. Hallelujah. Christ is my firm foundation. He is the rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaking I've never been more glad But I put my faith in Jesus Hey, he's never let me down He's faithful to So why would he fail now? Everybody shout, he won't. Whoa. Hallelujah. Let's sing that again. Christ. Christ is my firm foundation. He's the rock, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaking.
serve a God who won't. We serve a God who won't fail us. He never fails. He never fails. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't. Hey. He won't. Just reflect on what he's done for you in 2023. Oh, he's never failed. He's always come through. He's never failed. Even in the midnight hour, he won't fail. For some of us on December 29th, he won't fail. He won't. He's a good, good father. Yes, he is. He's a good, good father. He's a rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus He's never let me down He's faithful I don't know if you have that testimony. Yes. He's never let me down. Even when we thought we couldn't trust, he's never let us down. Even when things didn't look like it was going to work out, he didn't let us down. As we enter into 2024, let's just trust him more. As we enter into this new year, let's put our trust in him. We trust you, Lord. Can you say we that? Trust you, Lord. We 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 trust you, Lord. Even we can't trace you. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. to our feet. Yes. He's been a light unto our path. Yes. His word says that trust in me with all your heart. Lean not to my own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct our path. He brought us through surgeries. He brought us through difficult spaces at work. He brought us through family matters. But in all of that, he tells us to trust him. And he never fails us, but he always comes through. Oh, oh, we trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. Yes, we trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. Even in the unknown, we trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. Oh, we trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. Oh, we trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. Oh, we trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. Hallelujah, 
just connect with someone just quickly, if you can. Hallelujah. Just connect with someone. Just hold your hand, amen. And we're just going to just take the opportunity just to speak blessing, blessing into their life, even as they are getting ready to step into the new year. Come on, just find somebody, one person. Just connect with them, amen. Hopefully it's somebody that's, again, a little different. Come on, switch it up a bit. I know husbands and wives, y'all always connected. Come on. Come on. Get out your comfort zone, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Just connect with someone. And what we want to do, we want to just spend the next few minutes just praying for each other. And we're praying into their future. We're praying blessing into their 2024. So go ahead. Kids as well, y'all pray for each other. Amen. Kids as well, y'all pray for each other. Y'all connect. And go right ahead. Just pray into their lives. Pray into their destiny. Speak blessing. Let the Lord use you. To speak a word of edification, encouragement, and comfort to them. Hallelujah. Release something over their life that they can leave here remembering. online we speak the blessing of the Lord that makes rich that adds no sorrow over your life we speak God's supernatural power touching and working in the midst of you like never before even as you cross over and step through your open door to 2024 hallelujah we thank the Lord that is blessing again will nullifying every curse and every besetting assignment that has been set against your life. We thank the Lord for his hand of deliverance, for his hand of power in the midst of you. We speak freedom to your soul from every addiction, from every bondage. We speak liberty right now. We speak the liberty of the spirit for whom the son is set free is free indeed and we decree that you will walk in a new dimension of liberty. Liberty, prosperity, health, and wholeness. May it be yours in Jesus' name. May it be yours in Jesus' name. As we build our house on him, as we set our eyes on him, Jesus, you're all that we need. We bless you and we glorify you. You may be seated. Come on, just give God thanks. Come on. Give God thanks. Hallelujah. And love on a few full. Jesus, we give you thanks. Praise God. And we're especially thankful just to have you here with us as we celebrate and we give God thanks. Amen. For an amazing year in so many ways. A year of triumph and trial. A man of tested and proven. We give God thanks for his goodness. I know it's been rough. I know it's been a hard 
year. But beloved, he's made you even harder. Paul said, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And so in the midst of the fire, in the midst of what you've felt, in the midst of what has, again, come at you as affliction, let me tell you, the Lord was on a mission. Can somebody look at your neighbor and say he was on a mission? He was on a mission. And his mission was is that he was forming you into the image of his son. Yeah. Beloved, we can't be formed. Again, just in the easy by and by, to form something, to create something, it often means that things have to be broken, things have to be rearranged, fire has to be applied again. Oh, that hot metal has to be dipped sometimes in some very cold water. And some of you have felt like you've walked through, again, the deepest valley and that even the highest mountain has been such a struggle even for you to lift your head and look and think that you could climb it. But let me tell you this, again, it was not about the mountain on the outside of you. It was not about the valley that you'd stuck your feet in, a man in the midst of you, but it was about how the Lord was digging deep on the inside of you. Beloved, he was forming his son, Christ Jesus. For this reason, Paul says in Romans 8, you have been predestined in the mind of God. You have thought before of in the mind of God to be conformed to the image of his son. Amen. And so the highest purpose, the highest place of success for any disciple of Christ is to have that process at work in their life. Yeah. It says, concerning a good father, that he chastens those he loves. For if you were not, again, a son of his, you would not have experienced the fire. You would not have experienced the pressure. But he knows what it takes, again, to pull forth the glory that he's placed on the inside of you. His image, a man, the treasure hidden in your earthen vessel, beloved. Come on, you better look at somebody and tell them you got treasure on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Come on now. Oh, glory to God. You got treasure on the inside of you. But, beloved, in order to unearth that treasure, in order for me to recreate and to pull forth that fine diamond from the earth beloved I gotta press through and I have to dig deep and then I have to take again that darkened again element and I have to put it through a process to bring forth what you see when you look at that diamond it doesn't happen like that it doesn't just appear like that how many of you wish it would just happen by just a waving of a wand and then oh you're, you're at Disney World. No, it doesn't happen. This is not Disney World. The kingdom of God is not the magic kingdom. A man is the majestic kingdom. And the glory of the sun is revealed through process. And so 2023, I'm going to let you in on something. It was my most challenging year yet. Come on now. <laughs> I heard a fax in the congregation. <laughs> so I'm not alone. And I've had a lot of those type of years, but it was the most. But in the midst of it, what I saw is that the Lord, again, just as, again, the wine producer would bring forth the good wine, he'd have to crush, again, the grape. Beloved, I saw the crushing producing something. Come on now. Come on. I want you to look at somebody. Come on. I'm not just preaching tonight. You're going to preach because let me tell you, I fight the flu just to get here tonight. And beloved, you're going to have to fight with me tonight. Hallelujah. But I want you to look at somebody, amen, and tell them, let me tell you this. Again, I see something, again, coming out of your nothing. Come on. You don't look at me. Come on. now. I know you like to look at me, but don't look at me. Come on. Tell somebody else. I see something coming out of your nothing. Because sometimes in the midst of that crushing, you feel like nothing. But let me tell you this. The Lord's promise is to take us from glory to glory. Come on, put that screen up there because that's where we're going. Amen. That's again the mandate and the vision of the Lord. I believe for his church in this hour. Amen. That we would not just be rooted. Amen. In regards to, you know, sometimes we just want to hear from the Lord. God, you know, what's that prophetic word you want to speak over my life? But how many of you know the best prophetic words are right there in the word? Word. hallelujah and let me tell you this the Lord is speaking to us as a church and he's telling this church in the midst of the process in the midst of the pain in the midst of the pits beloved and in the midst of the pit stops whatever it was that you would have encountered face and ran through it was for the purpose of developing you and to lift you amen from one dimension of glory to another 
That's his promise. That's his promise for us. And we're going to turn right there in the word in 2 Corinthians 3. And I'm going to turn there shortly. But beloved, I want you to understand 2023 was purposeful. Do not curse the year. It's a tool in the hand of God. I meant to produce his glory on the inside of you, beloved, to develop you, to come to that place of maturity so that you can manage what he's about to put on the inside of you. And again, and produce out of you. Sometimes we want to see that thing happen. We want to see that dream manifest. We want to see, again, everything blow up as it should in our imagination as we envision how our life should go. But let me tell you this, if it was all to happen, and if the blessing was to come hastily, Beloved, it would not be a blessing, but it would be an entrapment because you would not be able to manage it. But the Lord, again, knew what he was doing when he took you through the process. The Bible says concerning a son, a man, there are things that he ought to inherit, but he cannot. He has to stay under the servant until he is of age, Paul said, so that when he comes to that place of being of age, being mature, again, being a huios, a, 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 a telios son, a son that is mature, that's what the word there means in the Greek, until he comes to that place then the son again is elevated even above the servant because he can now enter into his inheritance yeah. so God knew exactly what he was doing in 2023 on, yes. you were not lost even though you thought you wandered hello now you were not lost even though you thought you wandered the Israelites thought many times God what is going on here this journey through the wilderness, a man sometimes feels like I'm wandering in the midst of it. But let me tell you, every giant, every Amorite, again, and all the different ikes that they had to face, the enemies that they had to face, the journey that God took them through to encounter difficulties was for the purpose of preparing them. Because you see, when they got to the promise, they realized the promise, again, wasn't, again, just, again, pass a go collect $200. The promise was full of giants too. And they had to have fortitude on the inside that they built up through the wilderness to be able to face yes, 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 yes. and obtain all that God had promised in the land before them. And Paul, he's reflecting on the journey of Moses and the glory that they experienced even in that process. And he speaks to disciples of Christ. Believers, followers of Jesus, he speaks to us and he tells us, listen, the glory that is upon you in Christ and what he's doing in the midst of you is far greater and far superior. Second Corinthians chapter four, come on, turn there with me. Sorry, chapter three from verse four. It says, and we have trust through Christ to our God. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. Who can say God did? Amen. It is God who did it. It is God who performed it. I know some of you think you're real smart. And you're really skillful. But let me tell you this. A man without the one who gives you even the breath to argue even when you're arguing with him. Without him. Amen. Where would you be? Amen. So Paul, again, he, he sets the platform, and I want you to see this as we read this, because he's about to invite you into a deeper dimension of power and glory in the presence of God that you ought to be walking in. But he wants to set the platform of humility to allow you to know it's not you, it's God. So you can't be invited into deeper places in seeing the glory of God in your life. And even as we step into 2024, we will not see the fullness if we don't come to a place of emptiness. Hello now. Oh, nobody wanted to say amen there. <laughs> and what do I mean by that? Again, denying yourself, emptying yourself. Again, Paul says, listen, uh, and rather than you know, the Christ, I mean, he says, again, take up your cross and follow me. Beloved, you have to, again, crucify yourself that he might live. Galatians 2.20, that it's not no longer you who live, but Christ who lives where? In you, amen, so that the gift of God can be revealed to the earth. But again, I have to start from the foundation of emptying myself. It's not Dwayne, amen, it's him. Again, John the Baptist said, I must decrease that he might increase, amen. Are you willing to allow God to increase in your life this year? If you are saying yes, let me tell you this, you are applying also to decrease. What do you like to do? What do you, yeah. Let me tell you, God is going to check some things. 
Oh my goodness, we don't want to talk about that on New Year's Eve. We just want to get giddy and see fireworks. <laughs> Hello now. But he's going to check some things. And beloved, we have to be in that place where we are, again, having our eyes open. That when he does come and he says, listen, again, let's make this adjustment here. That we are willing to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Why? Because we want his sufficiency, not ours. We want his doors, amen, and not ours. Even in the Hebrew, the number for the year that we are in, or like now, that actually started last September. But again, the number for the year speaks of, and again, literally means open doors. You're in a season of open doors. Hello now. But let me tell you, God, before he carries you through a door, he wants to open this door. Hello. Hello. Come on, the door of your heart. He wants to go deep on the inside. He wants to walk through the ancient corridors of your life. And he wants to go down. Uh, uh, again, I don't know about you. I, I'm like, what, 41 now? I know I don't look it. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I'm 41 right now. But again, if I were to picture my life like a hotel, I have 41 floors. And let me tell you, God wants to go back again to floor number four. He wants to go back to floor number 10. He wants to go back to floor number 18. He wants to go back to some places in your heart to ensure that the foundations are right. Because if you're going to build and the foundations are shaky, then everything is going to fall. But if I allow him to come in and he says, listen, there was this incident that happened back then. I want to touch it. I want to heal it. I want to deliver you from that thing. I want to come and visit you in that particular area. Area. But God, I thought you did already. I thought we've been through this. No, I could have only took you so far back then because you could have only handled so much. But now that you're where you're at, I want to take you even deeper right now. How many of you have the humility to open a door that you thought was closed? Yeah. And God is saying, listen, I want to go deeper into that door. Yeah. Amen. There are doors within doors. And I'm not talking inception here. I'm talking a reality in Christ. Amen. That he wants to go into the deep places yeah. and intercept the things that try to mess with your wall. Paul says, listen, I'm setting this foundation. It's not us. Lest we think it of, a, of ourselves, it is God. And he goes on in verse 6, who also made us. Now, this is the good part. Sufficient. Come on, somebody say, he made me sufficient. He made, come on, you got to shout that. He made me sufficient. Come on, I mean, listen, to again, empty yourself. Again, it's not to think of yourself less. It's just to think less of yourself. Hello, did you get that? All right? It's not talking about, you know, again, loathing yourself and beating yourself with a whip. Oh, I'm such an ugly and hateful human. No, it's not that. You're not flagellating yourself. Hello? But it is God allowing you to understand, again, that you are sufficient in him. And you have to speak that and declare that even as you empty yourself of you. Hello now. Paul says he has made us sufficient. As servants of this new grace, our covenant, amen, even the word glory can be used there. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Come on, let me tell you this. God is changing what you accept as fuel in your life. Hallelujah. Let me tell you this. When I first came up here five years ago, I went in and I had to get a car. And I ended up again with the assistance of a good friend. Again, getting a car from a, a, a reputable dealer, a good a good car company, Acura. I mean, it's a good car company. And I didn't even use it before. I didn't know about it. I was a Mazda guy all my life. Hallelujah. But let me tell you this. When I went and I got that, because they were the, were the only ones. We actually went to Mazda first, and Mazda turned us down. <laughs> Believe that. And then we went to Acura. Acura was like, oh, yep, you can have it. All right. And again, we got up there. I was so thankful to God. But at the same time, what I realized is that this vehicle, a man, they said, you only can put, again, that top level fuel in here. You can't put anything less in here. Not you're going to mess with the engine. And I know a lot of you think that's just a bunch of baloney. And you, you try to risk at it. And then you might end up messing up your car. But it's not baloney. Again, my background is engineered. And I know that to be true. But the reality is you got to put in the right fuel. You got to put in what is required. Come on now. Come on now. Let me tell you this. And that was a bit new for us. But let me tell you, we followed the rules. We followed the rules and it lasted. It was a blessing to us. And I'm here to let you know this, amen, that again, there is a new level of what God wants to do in the midst of you as you step into 2024. But it's going to call for you accepting a new dimension of him in your life. And sometimes, again, when there's that call, it is, okay, God, you know what? Because guess what? When I got to 
put that fuel in, it's going to cost me a bit more. Hello now. David said, I will offer to God that which costs me nothing. I will not, sorry. He said, I will not offer to God that which costs me nothing. Because a man was willing to give him something to offer a sacrifice free. David, oh no. I don't deal with God like that. I don't handle the things of God like that. No, David understood the power of sacrifice. And let me tell you this. God is watching. Again, he is, again, looking at our hearts. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord search to and fro throughout the earth, searching for hearts that are loyal to him. And beloved, he's looking, again, for hearts that will choose him above all else. Amen. That will choose high-grade living instead of low-grade living. I'm not talking about, again, prosperity preaching here. I'm talking about, again, choose in high grade spiritual living amen. hello now amen. hello now a man choosing those times away with the lord as he woos you and as he calls you making a fresh commitment to rebuild the altars of your devotion to him remember the times when you would just be swept away in the love of the word and you would just go into it and it would just melt your heart because you're not just reading again just ink on pages you were meeting a man a man the word of god who is christ jesus amen and you were encountering him and again the power and the presence of god was all over you I remember moments like that in my, my room, uh, uh, Brother Chris. I was there, and I was just putting on the music, and I was worshiping God. This is when I was freshly saved, and I would just, again, lock the door. I didn't want nobody coming in. A man, I just locked the door. This is me in my parents' house, right, and locking the door. And I'm like, you know, there, and I put on, I, I got my, my, my tape uh, uh, deck there, and, you know, it has, you know, it's two speakers. Some of you guys don't know about that. That's old school tech. And then I'll take my cassette tape, and I'll wind it up with a pencil, and I'll put it in because, you know, sometimes that rewind button got broke and you had to do it yourself and I go over school and put my tape in and it'll play again it was again uh, 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 Darlene Check again he'll song again one of her first albums and just worship and I'll just rest there in the presence of God worshiping and sometimes I just fall asleep right there worshiping for hours amen with the word open and again there are many times about three times specifically one of my friends saw it himself again he came over knocking I'm like who's just knocking at my door but I didn't even realize because when I woke up right in front of me was a dead and some of you you know you know spiders you know snakes but where I come from there's something called a centipede and it's a dangerous bite it's a dangerous insect I can send you to the hospital I've been bit by one uh, when I was very young and, and again about this long thick right in front of my eyes as I rested there on the floor. And I may have had my bed right there, but when I was with the Lord, I was just on the floor. I was snotting all on that carpet. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God for cleaning up the carpet. But let me tell you this. I woke up about three times with dead centipedes around me because the presence of God was just so thick in the room. And one time my friend came in. I didn't even realize the last time I was telling you about, he knocked on the door. <laughs> and so I came and opened eyes. You know, you know, sometimes when people bother you and you're in the presence of the Lord, your, your face gets a little miserable. And I'm like, who's this bothering me? I'm here deep in the presence of the Lord. You know, I really should have the attitude of Christ, right? And I'm there. And I get up and I knock. And he's my good friend from college. And he's coming over to visit me. He lives nearby. And I open the door. He comes in. And he sees this thing. He's like, What? You didn't see that? And I said, no, I didn't even see that. Centipede right there dead on the floor. I'm like, my goodness. But these are the things I experienced even as a youngster going away to worship God. What am I saying? David said in Psalm 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He talks about the dynamics of the snare of the fowler, not even being able to catch him. He talks about arrows being shot at you, amen, but again, not even affecting you. I want you to know that our abiding, our pressing into the Lord, amen, for a high grade living spiritually is going to shift some things, beloved. There are going to be some wars that you will not even have to fight in 2024 that the Lord will fight for you he will shut down the enemy again he will shut down the foe beloved and again what is being sent as an assignment against your life will have to die amen in the midst of your worship to him may not be in a room like me 
but you may be on your way to work. A man, you may be, again, pressing through. You may be the single mom out there trying to deal with all you have to deal with and still love God. Again, begging the Lord, asking the Lord, Lord, please, again, let me see the end of the day. Lord, please, Lord, again, I'm, again, in the midst of a tight space. I don't know if the choose, again, paying the light bill, again, or paying the phone bill. God, I don't know because, again, here I am in the midst of this, and that might be you right now, but I want you to hear what the Lord is saying. Again, as you choose, again, him, and as you continue to seek him, mama, I just feel this mama upon my heart. I don't know where you are at. I don't know where you are listening, amen, but I just feel you on my heart, and the Lord says, amen, I, again, I'm going to fight your battles for you, and you're going to see supernatural breakthrough in 2024. Let me tell you this, not just for that mama, but for us as well. When we choose that high grade, when we choose God, you, you know, high grade, what does that mean? Again, I'm paying the price for it. Amen. I could do other things when I get up in the morning, but Lord, your face alone, your face will I seek. I'm going to choose you first. I'm going to put you first as a priority. Amen. Listen, God has given you the power to prioritize your life. Hello. When he was telling the Israelites about how he wanted to come. Yes, I'm, I'm, I want to come and, and, and pour out my healing on your land. But he says, you do these couple things first. Turn from your wicked. He, he gave them some things that they had to do. Meaning that God was not going to do it for them. What is Paul saying? You have received sufficiency from God to do what he needs you to do. To get what he's called you to receive. I declare in 2024, you will not live the life of just a letter. What Paul was saying about here, he was talking about the difference, uh, uh, again, just speaking about them. He says, not of the letter, but of the spirit. This is the sufficiency we get for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. You see, sometimes we can live hearing, you know, the things that are written about what God has done in the word. Hearing other people's testimonies about what God has done for them. Hello. But I want you to know the spirit that gives life wants to move through with you and give you incredible testimonies this 2024. Listen, before January the 8th, some of you are going to be shouting, God did it. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> Paul goes on to say, but if the ministry of death, remember we started with Moses, we started with the Israelites and their journey, again, a glory that was fading. He says, but if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious, it had a measure of glory so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance. And this glory was passing away. Now, this was when Moses came down. You remember the story of the Ten Commandments? Most of you, again... If you have read your Bible, you probably watched the film or you probably did both. Amen. But you know it. Amen. But he came down and the Bible says as they looked upon them, they were afraid because his face was literally glowing with the glory of God. So much so they had to ask him, listen, hide your face. But the thing is, is that glory was temporary. All right. Because again, he went up to meet with God. However, God came down in the form of his son to meet with you. And again, though he arose, arose, beloved, he also sent his spirit to dwell in you. So hello, your face should always be glowing. That's what Paul is getting to. Oh my goodness. He says again, that glory was passing away, verse uh, 14. But their minds were blinded for until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. Meaning they read the world, they don't get revelation. Again, they're living a dull life spiritually because the veil is only taken away in Christ. You see, we have to abide in him. Somebody say abide in the vine. Jesus said in John 15, again, I am the true vine. My father is the husbandman. And if you would abide in me, you will produce what? Much fruit. Beloved, fruit is seen. Fruit is not the root. The root is hidden. Amen. When we get connected to Christ, amen. Who is that? Amen. The true vine. We are supposed to produce fruit in our lives. This is a year for you to see the harvest of the seeds that was sown, amen, in your tears and in your sorrow and in your sweat. This is a year to see the harvest and the fruitfulness of God. Amen. There are enemies that have assaulted your mind, that have said, hello, you thought that that's what God told you to do. Look, it's not bearing fruit. There are enemies that are assaulting your mind, amen, that are speaking negative thoughts, that are speaking contrary to what you believed. 
But I remind you the promises of God are yes and amen. And the Lord again wants you to do one thing before you step into this new year. He wants you to flush out every stinking thinking, every thought that tries again to hinder your progress and hinder your belief from trusting in what he says. Will you deny those thoughts right now? Will you say again, even in the midst of your spirit? Because remember, I told you, God has given you sufficiency to do certain things. He tells you to renew your mind. He doesn't say, I'm going to come and do that for you. He says, you renew your mind by the cleansing of the washing of the word. So what am I going to do? I'm going to speak the word. I'm going to speak what God says. What has God said, said to you? What are you holding on to? Do you know the promises? A man prophetically, again, written. What are those things? Get them before your face. Don't just let the year turn and think of it as just another day. Get it before your face and make a determination that as I step into this year, I, I'm going to utilize the sufficiency God gave me to speak his promises. Amen. Hello now. Amen. Cameron, the Lord said of your life, I'm going to bless you with a scholarship. He gave you that promise. He's not a man that he should lie. He will perform what he says he will do. Listen, he can do it. I just remember that prophetic word. But he will do it. Nothing is impossible with him. This is what I mean. Because sometimes we look at, again, the methodologies and the systems of man. But we forget that we are part of a different system. A part of another kingdom that imposes itself, superimposes itself upon this one and overtakes it and overwhelms it. And we are ambassadors of that kingdom. Yeah. Listen, there are ways that the Lord has paid for you, daughter of God. I mean, that you're going to step into and you're going to say, look what the Lord has done. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Come on now. I mean, yeah, you can think about, oh my goodness, well, you know what? I need to have... 4.0, 4.0, 4.0. Let me tell you this. God's favor works a different way. God's favor often finds the ones that nobody expects. And he makes them their champions. 1 Corinthians 1, Paul speaks of that. But let me finish here. Because this is just a foretaste. When we step into the new year, we'll talk about this some more. But I want to get to a very significant part here. He says, reading over verse 15, but even to this day when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, nevertheless, come on, say that with me, nevertheless. Come on, how many of you love a nevertheless in a story? It changes things around. A man, it says it's not over yet. It says again, uh, I'm going to flip the script. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. When we choose him, 2024, Jesus, I'm choosing you like never before. Yeah. Oh, man, that, that works. That wraps. That rhymes. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stanley needs to make the beat, and Chris, you need to rap on it. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it does. But I'm telling you, we need to choose him like never before in 2024. Because, again, this is the opportunity that we have. We have been invited into a deeper place. And he says, now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? There is liberty. Amen. Whatever, again, has been said against you to hold you in bondage, to hold you back, to hold you down, to strip you. If it is thinking, thinking, it is a, if it is a habit, if it is an attitude, again, if it is company, if it is environment, let me tell you, the Lord can change it beloved there is a nevertheless that he is again put it right in the midst of your story Amen. Amen. and he's flipping the script Paul says where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty it means anything can happen nothing is impossible with him beloved we see that word liberty and we often think and attune it again to the dynamics of slavery and a slave being set free but it is bigger than that again it speaks again to its literal meaning to the atom being loosed at its very core you know what that means the splitting of an atom what happens when an atom splits Oppenheimer Boom! Boom! There are some booms that are about to go off in your life. Oh my goodness, you ain't get it yet. You're going to get it tomorrow. You're going to wake up and you're going to, oh, that's what he meant. Boom! Yes! I'm telling you. 
There are some booms. When a boom goes off, let me tell you, it shakes everything. And then it moves things out of place and it sets things in place. I'm telling you, where the spirit of the Lord is, amen, there is a release. And he's about to release some things, amen, that have been locked up in the heavenly. Some things, amen, that generational enemies that again have looked at you and scorned you and said you will never inherit and get this, amen. Patterns, amen, that you have seen in your family that have said you're just going to be a byproduct of the pattern. Beloved, they have been speaking and they have been cursing you. You know, sometimes you don't hear those giants, but you feel them. You feel the effects of them and you work through the warfare of them and you wonder, but why do I feel so tired today? Why do I I feel like I'm just dragging myself just to get up and get through this day. Beloved, Paul says you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but spiritual entities, wickedness in high places. And you cannot ignore the fact, Paul says, do not be ignorant of the devil's devices. So you must understand that there are those who are using their mouth. There are Goliaths, a man in the spirit that are using their mouth just as Goliath did to curse your God and the promises that he's made over you. To say you will not come into the midst of it. To say that you will just repeat the trend of your family to say you will not be the Abraham to break and to pierce through but Lord I declare in the name of Jesus can the people of God who believe stand with me today I declare in the name of Jesus that the Lord is making you the tip of the arrow and you will pierce you will pierce for your family you will pierce hallelujah amen for your legacy and for the generations that will come after you you will break through and go beyond and you will provide a new way for them your financial limit, break it off in the name of Jesus. Your faith limit, break it off in the name of Jesus. Every limitation, amen, that your bloodline has said, this is what you will inherit. Again, even in the midst of your health, amen, in the name of Jesus, I break that limit in the name of Jesus. They told you hypertension. They told you, again, chronic illness and disease. They told you cancer. But I bind it in the name of Jesus. And I rebuke the curse, beloved, but you got to rise up too. Because Eliab had a different sound that came out of his mouth. He was too busy looking at his brother David and competing with his brother than addressing the words of the giant. May God take your eyes off of others in this season. And it may cause your mouth to speak to the things that are in the way. May you speak and cast down every giant in 2024. Because the Lord is the spirit. I love how Paul dropped that line. You don't know how hard that line was dropped. Uh, beloved, I believe we, we're going to go deeper into the word this year because you, you must understand that, again, when Paul said some things, they're not as cute as it is written here. Paul said some things even to address some folk, a man where he, again, in their own language, told them a few choice words. Let me tell you, you'll be very surprised, even Jesus himself, you'll be very surprised, again, that the Lord has vehemence in his heart, a man, towards the things he hates. Some of you don't think Jesus can frown. He frowned a lot. Amen. He smiles a lot too. Amen. But I want you to understand again that when Paul said this, when the spirit of this is not a cute just sound to say, beloved, this is explosive. This means again, nothing is impossible for you. So what are you battling with right now? What are you dealing with right now? Because Paul invites you into the realm of liberty. Where the spirit can blow the lid off of everything. He says, but we all with unveiled face. Meaning that you've entered into it. Again, you've come into it. Beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. You're being transformed. You're being transformed. You're being transformed. Our theme for 2023. You guys remember it? For 2023. You remember it? You would be well wise to remember it. Why? Because it will help you to understand what the Lord was doing all along. The theme was from challenge to change. Still on our Facebook, it's not going to be there tomorrow though. We already got that replaced. We're going from glory to glory. I don't want to see that word challenge again. Hallelujah. No, but glory to glory is challenges. But the thing is, I want you to understand that the Lord prepared us. He told us. You may be saying, he told us, I'm shifting you from challenge to change. I'm using the challenge to change you. However, beloved, look what it says here. You are being transformed as you behold him. Everybody say, as I behold, as I, behold I, become. I become. 
And what I behold, I will become. So look at someone right now. Ask them the question, what will you behold in 2024? Because what you will behold, you will become. You will become. You will become. If I behold him, he says, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, I'm going to be transformed into the same image. From glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. Meaning again, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about, again, the instrumentation of how it is to happen. You don't have to worry, again, about the mathematic equations, the problems, the algebra. You don't have to worry about the comprehensive, again, compositions. You don't have to worry about the details as you submit to that place of beholding me. As you choose me, I am going to work by my spirit. He says, I'm going to do it. The spirit will do it. Come on now. The spirit will do it and then all of a sudden you'll be walking into the things that he has promised and you will walk into the goodness amen that he has said that you would inherit beloved again 2024 is your year amen to again take hold of a portion of your inheritance you have been digging wells you have been sowing seeds and you will do so praise the lord let me get my Gatorade over there. Praise the Lord. You'll be doing so as the year continues. We never stop sowing. We never stop serving. We never stop giving. However, it's okay. However, God wants you to understand this. Because you know what David said? I would have given up. If I had not seen the goodness of God in the land, not in heaven, in the land of the living, where the flesh dwells, I would have given up. I would have cast off hope. And this is why you're going to begin to see, as I said, a portion of it, because he's going to energize your heart. Get ready. For the first three months of 2024. Get ready to begin to see. Again the deposit. That's a good place to lift your hands. Hallelujah. I always tell somebody. Again I remember when a pastor said. You will get houses that you have not even built. I jumped up on a chair so high in a building as a teenager. And four years later I ended up inheriting that promise. Unbeknownst to me it was a surprise. Hello. That's what I talk about. You want to work it out. But Spirit of God can work it out if you keep your eyes on Him. So, Father, I thank you right now. Father, I thank you, God. Lord, as we step into this new year, a year of certain promises, God, a year, Lord God, where you have gone before us. You've made crooked pastures. You've made rough places smooth. Lord, you have already began, hallelujah, to water with the latter rain. Lord, the seeds that have been sown, even seeds that we have forgotten. God, Lord, there are some of us in this room that are getting ready for some suddenly surprises. But it is not that the thing, amen, amen, is a suddenly thing. It will happen suddenly, but it is something that the Lord will surprise you with that you forgot. Amen. Seeds that you would have sown into the ground that will return to you. Amen. And he will encourage your heart by it. He will stir your faith and he will fuel your soul and you will fuel others because it's not just for you. Amen. The earth is his and the fullness thereof. You're also going to begin to see the larger and wider vision of God for your life. This means that there is an inclusiveness that you didn't imagine that your impact touches. An inclusiveness, amen, that stretches the grace of God that he's been working in the midst of you so that it can flow out of you to touch, again, the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. Again, Stanley, I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, son, even over your life, the grace and the oil that I have been churning and that I've been working in the midst of you, it will flow and it has been flowing already. Amen. And it has been even as a stream, I mean, before the formation of a river, it has been as a trickle and it has been again, pressing against the stone. But the Lord says again, who wins the war? Amen. The rock or the water, indeed the water for in the midst of the time 
time that it takes, again, the pressure will open up a way and it will see itself through. And the Lord says, son, you will see the opening of the way and you will see many streams begin to form one major big river. And in this river, again, they will be hosted, again, food for the nations, hallelujah, food that will feed you, but food that will feed many souls and hearts. And they will rejoice in the goodness of the Lord because you were obedient in this season amen to steward the gift and to exercise it even when you felt again sometimes like give it up and throw it in the towel you were faithful to keep on pressing and the Lord says now it is time that I show you again what was made again in the pressing wheel what was made a man in the midst of the pressure what was made hallelujah in the midst of you hallelujah the Lord says get ready get ready amen for the unveiling of the harvest and even over us amen get ready the Lord says for the unveiling for the unveiling for the unveiling, for the unveiling. Father, I thank you right now. Hallelujah. Can somebody say, Lord, I am ready for the unveiling. Lord God, I'm not living in a season where my face will be veiled from your promises and from your goodness. Where I could, well, you know, just walk, uh, you know. I, listen, you got to get tired of living a normal Christian boring life. And again, again, press the Lord. <laughs> oh, this season. It's unveiled season. It's a season of me seeing the goodness of God in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Praise God. My dear sister, I just want to minister to you. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, daughter, that I have already gone before you and I've already began to instrument some things. What I see, I see as if a man that would sit down with a guitar, he would put it together and he would begin to, again, strum and stretch out those strings and he would put them in place and he would begin to tune it. I see that, again, even in the past seasons, it's almost as if the Lord was doing that process even in the midst of your life. I mean, just like that guitar, you know, I, uh, 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 Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 18, he said, I went down to the potter's house and I saw the Lord working on the wheel. You know, sometimes as God shows people things, you know, he shows them them in images. And that's what I saw. I saw your life like a guitar and it's as if the Lord, again, was taking his time to make sure, all right, that E string, it's in there, you know, that G, that D, that B, you know, he's putting in everything and he's laying it out again. And even in this past year, you know, when the tuning begins to happen, what happens? You feel a stretching and you felt that stretching. You felt that stretching even in the midst of things you've worked through and you've pressed through. And again, how you've extended yourself and, and just, again, the gifting of God just stretching you. But he's saying that even in this season, he's bringing in you into the fruitfulness of that stretching. That what seemed to have stretched you like, God, you know. I can't take any more of this, you know. Enough is enough. That stretching, the Lord says, even as the, again, the instrumental uh, instru instrumentalist, he takes that guitar and he then just strums it and he listens to the guitarist and he says, ah, it's in tune. It's in tune. And then he begins to play the sound. And then the Lord says, I'm about to play again such a sound out of your life. There are things where I see your hands are here and they're there and they're everywhere, but he's beginning to bring things into a, 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 a singleness, almost like a, a, a unifying of things where you're not going to be stretched out as much because you put in the work and you put in the time. And again, I see the Lord opening an effectual door where you'll find your rest. It's like, you know, when you're in your spot, in your place, and it's like, okay, and this thing, again, can supply you. You know, it, it can feed you. You don't have to, you know, wonder, you know, you know okay, God, you know, I'm, I, I'm bearing this up. I'm doing what I have to do. But the Lord is really going to bring you into a season of abundance because of your faithfulness to allow him to stretch you yeah to allow him to do what he had to do in you and he's going to use you not just through again your instrumentation but he's also going to use again your voice he's going to use your voice even as a song again even to again cause hearts to be lifted to cause hearts to be mended to cause healing to flow amen have you ever used your voice and sing amen i know you play i don't know about you but that's what i uh, 
a little bit, a little bit, but I see him. I see him again just opening you up and again your voice again just flowing upon the instrument. And it's almost as if, you know, when you spend time just playing and you're by yourself and you're just singing as you're playing and you're just thinking, well, you know, this is for the audience of one, meaning yourself, you know. It's like, you know, I don't know if I, I want people to hear that. But the Lord is really just, you know, injecting confidence, amen, even in the midst of that. Because you see, it's not just with, you know, the quality of, of, of your chords and, you know, all those things that we imagine it to be. But most of the times, the struggle, even with singing, is with confidence, amen, and with practice. But I see that with you. I see the Lord blowing open the stage. And it's almost as if, you know, we have these shows. Again, America's got talent and all these different types of shows. But I see an opportunity like that. This is what I'm talking about. I know it may sound because it's symbolic. It may sound a little confusing. But again, when I'm speaking about, you know, all of those years of just tuning and just setting out the strings and then just strumming again in that place of things becoming easier. I just see an open door being made again for you. Again, we're again life in itself. You know, again, you, you press hard. You're a hardworking woman. You, you go at it. You go for it. But again, because of that, I mean, he's seen that. And like Hagar in the desert, God saw her. You know, she said, God, you're the God who sees me. And he says, I see you again. And I'm making it just easier for you. Amen. Bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on. Can we just stand? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time to go. <laughs> oh, man. We are 10 minutes away. We were from our landing point. But I just want to pray and bless you. I really wanted to anoint all of you tonight. But I'm going to do that again first Sunday in the new year when we gather. We're going to anoint you. We're going to prophetically speak into all of your life. Amen. And we're going to finish talking about what this glory will look like because there are different dimensions to it spiritually, again, physically. Again, there are dynamics to it, even emotionally and also, again, industrially. So we're going to talk about those dynamics of what the glory will do and what God is inviting us into. Amen. But again, I do want to minister to all of us. And so I hope you can be here. Hallelujah. But again, invite others, even if they're those who are not here. Amen. And you know they need to hear what the Lord is saying. We're going to have prophetic teams and we're going to be ministering. Amen. Prophetically, just as we did to my dear sister right here. Amen. Did that bless you? Was that a blessing to you? Amen. Praise God. And so again, I invite you to do that, you know, uh, um, and invite others. But we just want to give God thanks. Amen. Come on, let's just lift our hands one more time. Father, I just thank you. Lord, I just thank you. I just thank you for your goodness. I just thank you for your grace upon us all. I just thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, for lighting upon each and every one of us. Hallelujah. Lord, again, young man in the back, what's your name? Eric. Eric. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord saying you are seen. You are seen. You are seen by him. He says, son, you are seen by me. I see you like, again, David with his brothers. And there were those who looked like the part. But God told Samuel, it's not them. It's the one that's out back. Samuel said to, again, listen, Jesse, have you any more sons? And he called David in. And David came in. And Samuel said, you see, God dealt with Samuel's heart. A prophet of God missed it at first. He thought it was the one that looked the part. But God said, I don't see how men see. Men see the outward appearance, but I see the heart. The Lord says, I see your heart. You have a Davidic heart. You have a creative spirit. And the Lord says, I am going to open up a way where you think there is no way. The Lord says, there are multiple expressions of my person and of my creativity that I put in the midst of you. The Lord says, even entrepreneurially, there's a spirit that rests upon you to step out and to pioneer and to break out and not just to be under, again, the institution of others, again, but to form your own and to bring others along. The Lord says, I've anointed you as a David. David took, hallelujah, I'm just losing my voice a bit, but I want you to know this, amen, before it goes. David took... Men that were broken, disgusted, and depressed. And he made them into what God said were mighty men. I see even in the formation of what God will do with you, even through business, I see the Lord will cause you to bring those, again, that others have looked over and bring them into a place of prominence and strength. Because you are a quiet leader. You are a quiet influencer. 
Amen. There is strength in the midst of your quietness and your resolve. And others see that and they look upon you and they say, my goodness, he's like an anchor to me. But again, you're going to see that even more real in your life. Even in the next five years, I hear the spirit of the Lord says, mark five years from this day. You're going to see, again, mighty men standing around you and beside you, supporting the vision that I put on the inside of you and building with their hands what I have called you to build for my kingdom and my glory. For I have called you and I have anointed you, says the Lord. And it's not just in your area, even of study and schooling. You know, that's a dynamic unto itself. But the Lord really has a fresh expression that he's going to release through you. Just as he did Mark Zuckerberg and again just shook him up even in the midst of his you know days at college. The Lord is really going to shake up some things and he's going to express some things through you. But again what's the most important part is that you're going to in that Davidic spirit again lift others even as God lifts you. You are seen. You are not forgotten. Again the enemy can, can you come? Come come quickly. Come quickly. I just want to anoint you. Just bring the oil very quickly. I want to anoint you. Because you see when God calls David, what the enemy likes to do, the enemy likes to throw rejection at David to make them feel they're forgotten and they're rejected. So I want to anoint you today. That's all right. There you go. Amen. Lord, I thank you for your son. Lord, I thank you, God. Every assignment that the enemy has tried to bring of rejection, Lord, I thank you it is broken over his life. Lord, it will not hinder him. The enemy tried so much to hinder David by rejecting him over and over again. But David rose up each and every time. Even when some of his men wanted to stone him. David encouraged himself in the Lord. I declare again that you will be skilled in such a way. That at every turn you will not need the voice of others. You will only need the voice of God. At every turn. I know we like the voice of others. We love affirmation. I like to be affirmed too. But the Lord's voice will be enough for you, young David. Go out there. Be strong. Amen. Bless you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Come on. Hallelujah. So God bless you all. Amen. Amen. What a word to send us out into 2024. And I want that when you are seeing the fireworks this evening, that as they boom here and there, that these two things come to your mind, okay? You remember the boom that speaks to the liberty and the freedom that God has for us. Every time it goes off, no, it's not a gunshot. You're not in the hood, okay? It's a symbol. It's a reminder that God wants to explode in the midst of us and bring us to true liberty, true freedom in his name. All right? That's the first thing. The second thing, he asked us, the Apostle Daniel asked us to look to our neighbor and ask the question, who are you going to behold? What are you going to behold? And as we behold the fireworks tonight, again, I want us to really think about that question. All right? It's easy to just have an answer. Oh, I'm going to behold God. I'm going to behold, you know, Jesus, whatever it is for you. But what does that mean in practicality? What does that mean in actionable steps? What does that mean in my choices? What does that mean in my scheduling? What does that mean for me? Not just the generic, because in the generic, in the nebulous, you get lost. But we want the specific, right? We want to be intentional. We want to be deliberate because the Lord is intentional about us. All right? And I want to deliberately welcome visitors and friends who are not here often. <laughs> we want to thank you for being here. We want to thank Odalis for being here for the first time. God bless you. I see my sister, Jen. <laughs> Family in the back. All right. Birthday. Your birthday is today? How I don't know this? Happy birthday. A spectacular birthday. With signs and wonders following. May God continue to give to you the way that you give to others. Your heart is so big, so generous, and so open. And I know that that is a seed that already bears fruit in your life. But 
the man of God said, is going to bear even more fruit in 2024. And I know you look for opportunities, so may God continue to open opportunities for you, not just to bless, but to be blessed, you and your household. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I also want to celebrate uh, the Brathwits who are going to be celebrating how many years? Pardon me? I can hear you. How many? 25 amazing years of marriage. As of tomorrow, we will take some more pointers <laughs> from you later on this year for all the ones who are coming behind who are in the ones and twos and the seventeens and the and and the you know the ones who need to 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 know what it takes to get all the way to 25. I mean y'all y'all have been um married as long as I've been alive, my God. <laughs> oh here comes the boom. All right. So and my dear Harriet. Is, it? is that right, Harriet? Yeah. It's a pleasure to have you with us as well. You weren't here when we welcomed the visitors. And I'll ask Monica if she would just um, hand around, if, if need be, one of the cards are in right there in the basket. Bless the Lord. Not going to keep you. We want to remind you that our Wednesday sessions start back on January the 17th. I know you guys are ready to go but stay with me just a few seconds january the 17th we start our wednesday sessions but of course we'll remind you between now and then exciting january the 8th we start our 21 days of deeper intimacy with jesus anyone who has done that with us before knows that it is a fruitful wonderful worthwhile time of pulling away and being with jesus it's a time of fasting, it's a time of prayer, it's a time of community. And every day for that 21 days, it's going to run January the 8th to 28th. We have a session online where um, either Dwayne, one of our leadership team, or one of our friends of the ministry will um, present something to you, pray. Uh, we'll have essentially times of connection so we don't lose track in the midst of that. And we will send this out to you as well okay <laughs> all right and then we are going to be as many of you know we, we spoke about doing our hampers for homes in december we decided that we had to postpone that the new date for that is going to be january the 27th we want you to get excited to it about it we want you to give into it like you know we'll tell you what we are looking to give in terms of tangible um provisions so that we can go out and be a blessing to our family. We thought it might be better to give those things when all the Christmas money is gone. Okay. <laughs> when, when the January bills start rolling in and yeah. Okay. And then of course, finally, our February 23rd and 24th Rise Up Leadership Conference. We want to remind you that that's happening. The Eventbrite is open and waiting for you to register. If you have not yet, it's going to be an amazing time of um, impartation, of um, wisdom dropped from speakers who are coming from not just America, but the Caribbean as well. People who are stewards of business, of corporation, of uh, ministries, people who have tenure, not just in spiritual things, but in um, everything to do with leadership, all right? Men and women of God who are praying for you already, praying into the conference, and we want to encourage you to be there, invite your friends. We already have people who are making preparations to fly in for it, so get your tickets and be with us. And with that, it's time to give. <laughs> Uh, the basket is here. If not, the ways to give are on the screen. And we just want to thank God today, as we do every day, for his many blessings, for his graciousness, for his favor. Father, we thank you for the gifts of your hand. Father, we thank you that you provide for us, God, in ways even beyond what we would expect, Father. We know that you are faithful to your people, Lord God, to always make sure that we are not in need. And we thank you, Lord God, that you also provide ways for us to be a blessing one to another. God, to be a blessing to your kingdom and to be blessed to be a blessing where needs are 
greatly felt and deepest felt. So we thank you, Lord God, once again for the gifts that will come to your kingdom today. We pray that everyone who has the opportunity to give today will be blessed. And for those who may not have to give, I thank you for provision coming to their hands, Lord God. I thank you for worry going from their hearts in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God, that you would meet the needs that exist here. And I thank you, Father, that you will give us even insight one, um, one to another, God, to know how to be a blessing, how to give out of the storehouse of benefit that you place in our hands. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. Amen. And with that, let's head on out. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.